Tak lihat aki selalu. Ah, ini sekarang kita. Sabar, sabar. Ah, porque ya empieza, porque ya empieza. Que si me apaga la tele, tú. ¿En serio? Porque ya empieza. Claro, es que a las una de la mañana siempre se me apaga la tele. ¿En serio? Sí, por. Odio. Ah, mira, estoy en los subtítulos, bien. Ah, sale la mano. Joder, me va a mirar. Ah. Hey everybody, I'm Carrie Champion. Welcome to We the People. So today we are having a very candid oh. conversation with athletes and artists who to make sure that you use your voice to vote. Voting is your voice. So we have so many issues that are happening in this country. It's really truly unprecedented time. So I'm looking forward to these conversations. I think we'll be educated as well as entertained, but most importantly informed. We have more than vote.org, when we all vote.org, and fair fight. Those resources are imperative as we try to change our future. Yeah, There's no way that we can talk about hip hop or even the fact that we want to talk about activism, black voter suppression without bringing in this guy straight from Fort Worth, Texas. We were talking about Bumby. He is an activist, a scholar, and a long gentleman. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Bun, I don't want to start heavy, but I guess I have to because that's where we are in the world today. It's heavy as hell. And when you think about what needs to happen in this country in terms of change, what's the first thing that you think of? Um, equality. That's pretty much the first thing that, that comes to mind, right? Black people need to be seen as equals in this world. You know, we had to fight just to be recognized as a full citizen in this country and not um, three-fifths. The world is now seeing what we've known for so long in the culture and in the community. Um, the one way that we can fight is obviously voting. Talk to me about what voting means to you. I hear people all the time talk about one vote doesn't matter and that voting doesn't make a difference. If that's true, why do they work so hard to suppress the black vote? Because they understand the power of the vote. And so it's time that black people collectively also understand the power of their vote. And not just on a national level, because a lot of times we only have this conversation every four years. People need to be very much involved in their local politics. They need to understand who their elected officials are, where they stand on issues that affect you. And you need to use your vote to either support the ones that um, care about you and your condition, or to elect people who do. A newer initiative that we're dealing with is um, educating felons, right? So in the state of Texas, um, if you're a felon, right, if, if you've been in, to jail or to prison, and but you're no longer on probation or parole, you have the right to register to vote. Um, another thing um, that was just brought to my attention is an initiative called the Orange, which is happening not just in Houston, but all over the country. If you're in jail currently um, during pretrial, but you have not been um, convicted, like you, you, you're still in jail waiting to, to for your day in court you are still eligible to vote and you said something so key they work so hard to hope that we stay uninformed or more importantly to suppress the black vote if you could do one thing with this message that we're trying to send today about how important voting is what type of images would you like for people to understand and see when they go to these polls and vote or when they cast their ballots I think the images that we've all seen, you know what I'm saying, for decades in this country, if not centuries in this country, we've seen black people oppressed, we've seen black people attacked. So every time you look back and you see those old black and white images of people of color being attacked by dogs and people of color being sprayed with hoses, that's what they were fighting for. Back then, they were just fighting for a chance to vote. People like Martin Luther King Jr., people like Malcolm X, um, these people died to help us um, be in a position to have the power that we have now, which is to be able to cast a vote and make a decision about the people that have control over our lives. So, I mean, if, if you if you in your own community need a reason mm -hmm. to vote, look at a person like George Floyd. If the people in your city are not open to police reform, are not open to having a conversation about defunding the police, are not open to issues concerning economic equality, judicial equality, and racial equality, right? If they're scared to say Black Lives Matter, you have the power to put people in those positions who do believe that black lives matter, who do believe in racial equality, economic equality, judicial equality, right. right? Who see us as human beings. And if the people in your in your community don't feel that way, vote them out. It's that simple. You just vote them out. We, we don't have enough time 
sit around and hope that people change their mind. Yeah, Bumby, you point out something so important. We have the power, and that is in our vote, and that is with our voice, and that's how we use our voice. I, I think of where we are right now, and people say this is a particular moment, but it is a movement, not just a moment, it is a movement. Uh, why, in your opinion, was it George Floyd's death? Why was that the chosen um, brutality for people to say, oh my God, black people are still oppressing this country, and it is not fair. I think it's twofold, Carrie. In so many different encounters with between people of color and the police, there simply is no proof of what happened in the interaction. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is in a court of law, um, it tends to lean towards the policeman's point of view, right? In this case, we saw very clearly what happened. I think the other thing is, is due to the fact that everyone was at home, basically, um, during this time period in relation to the coronavirus, you couldn't avoid it. Right? It was on every television station, it was on every social media platform. Everywhere you turn, you were constantly hit upside the head with this message. You see in the interaction that this man did nothing to deserve what, what happened. That's right. And I think it's so well said because if you think about it, in the, gr the grand scheme of things, it wasn't worth it and he didn't have to lose his life. I think that we brought on, we touched on something that a lot of people talk about. Um, and that is now defunding the police. That has been such a huge conversation, but there's so many misconceptions around defunding and dismantling. Uh, if you will, educate the audience. All right, so most people, when they hear the term defund the police, they tend to think of, oh, they're gonna take away our police department. Nothing could be further from, from the point. Defunding the police means that in certain communities, even Houston take, for example, we had over a billion dollars allocated to our police force. Now, what is that money being used for? Some of that money tends to be allocated towards riot shield, right? Pepper spray, right? That kind of thing. That's only used against the people that fund this, this budget, right? So why would the people want to supply the police with the means to oppress them? If the police are concerned about the situation in certain communities um, with a higher crime rate, well, higher crime rates tend to happen in communities where there's not, um, there's, there's not uh, employment opportunities, Right? There's not a lot of social services, and people are going to do what they need to do to take care of themselves and their families. When the community has more opportunities for employment, more opportunities for upward mobility, then they tend to be a less of a strain on the government. They tend to have a lower crime rate, and because of that, we'll have less need for the police in those communities. You um, are passionate about so many different things in terms of making sure that we are holding our leaders accountable. Talk to me about some of the other projects that you have. Well, right now, obviously, being a part of More Than a Vote is essential. Um, we're dealing with primaries in this country right now. And we just want to educate people. We want to inform people because people are tired, they're angry, they're concerned, and they want information and they want action. And so we want to make sure that we give them the right information and lead them in the right direction. And we thank the people that do not look like us for standing with us right now because it's very important that people, that people who aren't black be involved because if black people could have gotten rid of racism we would have done it hundreds of years ago and so i'm trying to use my voice and my platform just to let people know that if they feel like i do there's a number of places they can go to enact change in their community people need to know about how their city council runs they need to know that they have the ability to speak when city council meets to let them know that that's not the way that they feel their city needs to be run those are not the places that they feel the money of their community needs to be allocated and Bubby, even a step further, they can run for office in their local community. They can run for positions. Like people act like they leave it up to somebody else. If you're upset, I, it's not hard to get on the school board. It's not hard to be a part of the city council. It really isn't. And depending on how small your town is, you could be a mayor. It's the power is with the people. And we need to just know that that's happening. Absolutely. And it's always been with the people. You know, if you look at Trayvon Martin's mother, Sabrina Fulton, right? She felt that there was a system of racism and a system of oppression that led to her son's death. And so what did she do? She ran for city council and she was elected city council. Our own former president, 44, Barack Obama, right? Started in the community as an activist, ran for an elected position, became senator, ran for another elected position, and became president of the United States. So don't think that you can't make a difference. You know what I'm saying? You don't need a lot of money. You don't need a lot of power. Your voice is enough to make a difference. Amen. I feel like I need to go out and run for something. You gave me a rousing speech there, sir. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this. Um, when, I, when I talk to um, my brothers, I have to ask you, as a black man, how are you doing? Are you okay? I'm good. I'm good. I have a very strong relationship with God, so prayer definitely works for me. I have children and grandchildren who are watching me 
who are encouraged by what I do and they're proud of me right now, you know, and that's really what matters, you know. The change starts at home, you know, so as long as you have a support system that believes in what you're doing and supports you in what you're doing, you have everything you need to go out there and fight the good fight. And for those that don't, there's a community of people here to help you. So you can go to places like morethanavote.org. There are many different places that will encourage you, inform you, and they will put you with groups of people that feel like you that are ready to take action. So no one has to go about this alone if they want to do it. Yeah, we're stronger together. People have been saying it, but that has much more meaning now that we are in our movement at this moment. RB, it has been an education, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Keep fighting. Keep up the good fight. Uh, yeah, la la. So our next guest, I have to admit I'm a fan. Uh, but there are so many different people that we could talk to, and I thought it was so imperative that we speak with her. You know her as Molly uh, on the huge, successful show, Insecure, HBO's Insecure. She also has a comedy special highlighting her Nigerian roots, and she's an amazing podcaster. Let's welcome Andy Bond for you. You have such a beautiful way of making things funny, giving us our medicine with some candy, right? The humor yeah. and the healing. You bring all of that to your space and right now as you look across this country and how everyone is so broken and so upset if it's not social injustice it's the pandemic it's depression it's employment the list goes on and on how are you doing you know i am i'm rediscovering self in a way that i that is hard but necessary that will lead to ultimate joy I know it sounds like like a lot, but no, I, I think I, I personally put, think that God put all of us on a global timeout. Like we just, you know, America hasn't done as good as other people when it comes to timeouts because uh, everyone else is out playing at recess and we look, we're still in the principal's office hoping and wishing we could come out. But I think that if we settle into the timeout and really learn the lesson that we're supposed to learn from the season, I think we'll emerge better. We'll, we'll learn how to play well with others in more ways than one. Uh, mm -hmm. And so personally for me, I'm taking this time to, to learn me in a new way. I feel like I'm being ushered into a new season and I'm getting still. Because sometimes the busy uh, confounds the, the work that we're supposed to actually be doing. You know, we're busy doing other stuff, but we got work that we need to do on the inside. And I'm like, I'm leaning into it. I'm like, dang, I thought I thought I was going to be able to rest like everybody else. And you guys like, now nah, we got work to <laughs> do. You know what? And I think that's what everybody is saying about 2020. It's demanding that we be better. And you said it's a global timeout. What do you mean by that? Yeah, it's like, everyone sit down. Sit down, be humble, to quote the great prophet Kendrick Lamar. Uh, but, like, no, seriously, sit down and let's reevaluate some things. Let us unearth and shake up the things that we have been trying to hide within ourselves, within our nation. Um, I think America is going through an unraveling right now, a much needed, a much necessary one. And I think all eyes on us, right? There is no, oh, I was on the subway for an hour if so I didn't miss that thing that happened. No, everybody was home. Everybody, you know, was watching when George Floyd died. And everybody, no one could, could hide it. Everyone was watching when Amy Cooper called the cops. Like, this is a, a time where it's like, oh, we can't pretend it away. We can't excuse it away. No, 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 no. It's a global timeout. Sit down, watch, and let's learn. And globally, it's like, hey, we were going business as usual, but it ain't usual no more. Like, that, that, that's old. Anytime change occurs, it's very uncomfortable. And so right now we're sitting with the, we're, we're getting, <laughs> we're getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. The minorities, we've been comfortable with being uncomfortable because that, that to me explains just the existence for whatever we want to do, how we break into our careers, how we live our lives, how we find ourselves one of the few or one of the first. Um, and that's a lonely road. When you look, and you talk about this global timeout, everybody had to pay attention to Amy Cooper. Everyone had to pay attention to George Floyd. How is that? I think, well, one, we're not minorities, Carrie, you already know it. It's like these labels that they put on us, it's like, it's like, it's like the same way of saying like black on black violence. Also, there's no white on white violence. It's branding. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's all branding. You're right. 
It's like, white people kill white people every single day. So no, there is no black on black violence. And if you say black on black violence, well then let's brand white on white violence. Like, I watch mm -hmm. Investigation Discovery. <laughs> Ain't too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I just even like, just to answer your question, what does that do? I think what everyone expected is what has happened in the past when the world was so open, right? In that, okay, you had everyone, uh, 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 from Trayvon Martin to Castillo to Sandra Bland, you had all of these, all of these lives lost. And black people made some noise. You know, we rioted, we, we got out in the streets, we started the Black Lives Matter movement, all of those things. And then after, and then white people kind of just like, oh, let's give them something, or and then it's just like, is it over? It's like, it's like Oscar is so black. Like, okay, okay, good. We got, we gave some Oscars. Are we good now? Like, are we even? Mm -hmm. You know. And it's now, it's just like, oh no, 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 no. This is not about. This is not about like a, a band. It's like, yo, we might have to amputate the leg a little bit, but it's all right because we won't. By amputating the leg, we don't think about it. And so I think that's what happened. America is realizing, like, oh, black people aren't just making a little bit of noise. Like, the protests are still out. The the conversations are still being had. The change is still being demanded. And I think they're seeing, oh, this is not going no way. And no, it's not, because we need systematic change. What a beautiful way to explore what is happening and describe our country. We might have to amputate the leg, but that's to save the body. That's what's happening right now. That's beautiful. Um, and to that end, I have to ask you this, because the way that we do that, we use our voice. And our voice right now in this world, in this country, is our vote. Um, and everyone talks about voting and how important it is, but I feel like more than ever we understand that it's not just about voting every four years for the man in office. It's about your local elections. It's about the mayor. It is about the district attorney, the people who have the power to bring charges against police if police brutality is an issue in your community. If you care about your school district, you can run for the school board. I ask this of you, right? Your parents are from Nigeria. You are Nigerian. You talk about that very lovingly. What does voting mean for you? You know, I think voting is power. I remember, you know, I, was, I became a naturalized citizen um, back in the 90s um, when um, I was still a minor. My mom naturalized, and so we were able to do it under her. And just even that power of, like, we are American citizens and all the access that we have by being citizens, one of those accesses and those access to power and being voting, it's a big deal. It's a big deal because not only are we do we have the opportunity to be in this country, but now we can be of the country. We can be of the system. We can be of the rules. We can be of um, what it actually affords. But I think, going back to your earlier comment about uh, just the setup of systems, I think we are done a disservice either in schools or whatever it is, and I'm not putting teachers on blast. I think teachers do a phenomenal job, but for some reason, we do not, and, and, and give them all the reasons. I, I know too many parents who are like, I might, this child of mine, I do love them, but hey, who, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where can I drop them off? And I do think that there's a disservice done because, again, when we talk about this, we talk about every four years, it's important to vote for the presidency. We don't realize, like, oh, snap, we actually can vote about, like, how much our libraries get. It's like small things like that, but they make a big difference. When you think of voter suppression in this country, what does it look like? It's the system. When we talk about voter suppression, we also talk about systematic racism, right? It's all the systems that set up. And we've, we've normalized, okay, maybe your job will give you a half day, or maybe, you know, you'll be able to get this luxury. It shouldn't be a luxury. It should be built into the system. It should be built into the fabric of how we vote. But maybe you'll be able to get this luxury in order to enable you to go vote. Think about everything... Uh, disenfranchised, marginalized black person has to endure in a day. So in a day, you need to get to work. If something happens to your car, if something happens to your child care, if something happens to... There's so many factors along the way that can send you into a place as an American. And then you add on as a person of color. If you're just trying to get to vote, and you already have to go through all of these hurdles and hoops in your everyday life, Imagine the one day when your voice, voice really is supposed to matter the most in this country, but then you also see all the times that you tried to have your voice matter, and then 
it's been shut down, repressed, told it doesn't matter, and then you're kind of like, what's the point? How do we keep? How do we keep hope? If if, I, if I'm watching this right now, I wanna. I, how do we as a people stay hopeful? How do we believe in the promise that these quote unquote forefathers have given us? Because have you met black people? By by by. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, you been, if we haven't been broken mm-hmm. down through, be it through slavery, through give it to, give it to me, through give it to me, colonization, through segregation, through you know, I mean, black the, the history of black people in this country is at one point we were three fifths people. That's it. That, that, that was a written law. And look at us now. We are whole. We are black girl magic. We are black boy joy. We are, you know, saying what I what I think about in terms of, of giving us hope, right? We're making a lot of people nervous right now, Carrie. We're making a lot of people nervous right now because they're like, dang, we put all these obstacles in their way, and these jokers are resilient. But that should give us hope. That should give us hope that like we can't stop, we we'll stop. I mean, I went to the school of Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Hashtag, bye bye, bye bye. Harlem shaking it right now. We can't stop, we we'll stop. And I, and I, I think that's our motto. We can't stop voting and we will stop voting. We can't stop marching and we will stop marching. We can't stop thriving and we will stop thriving. To that end, because you led me directly there, um, I've been asking everyone who has appeared on this platform, what does que es eso de grupo avanzando ni idea pero la gente se está saliendo ya ves racistas hasta veo un directo de un youtuber famosísimo y ya se ha salido ¿quién? ya te lo diré a ver. ahora mismo estoy en vídeo
the world. You're a model, a couple model. Also, wait, don't let me forget your hugely successful uh, st uh, stand up comedy um, special on HBO. Girl, you no, I mean, you? Oh, and I am so What's grateful. You are truly the dream, not just the American dream. You're a black girl, brown girl. You would all dream. The immigrant, immigrant dream, everything. You are a beautiful, beautiful person. I really, really mean that. Yvonne Orgy, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Nothing but the best and excellence for Southwide. Thank you so much. I love you from the middle. Mwah. Habrá que ver el monólogo ese. Show. Yeah, no, no. Rush. Estamos por el tercero. Nos falta entre este, este chico y tres más. Cada presentación dura unos 10 minutos o 15. Qué asco, no tape la pantalla, cuadrán. and I'm benefiting financially off of it. So I feel like if you're a white person financially benefiting off of black culture, you have to put finances back into black culture. So it's that simple. The, the you know, screenshots with your feelings, it just comes off like fake empathy. Because it, it comes off very dismissive and very, uh, oh, that sucks for y'all. But anyway, back to what I was doing. Have you felt that way always? Or is it now because of the time of where we are in this country? I've always had the feeling. I think now uh, it's just obviously elevated. It's a new level and there's new, you know, it's it's to the point now where you can't, first of all, you can't not say anything. Second of all, though, I just think saying something isn't enough anymore. I think, you know, if you have the ability to uh, put money back into a culture that you're financially benefiting from, have the ability to, you should. It's interesting that you talk about it in that way because some people do believe that silence is the best way to go because it's hard to talk race, especially if you're white and you're in the black culture. People just feel as if they can't talk about it. They feel awkward. They feel as if they don't have the privilege of the words. You. Uh, how do you find yourself right now in terms of interacting with people when they want to talk to you about social injustice, police brutality, what's going on in this country right now? Well, first of all, Picking and choosing whether you want to be silent or not about uh, race, that's a privilege in and of itself. But, um, no, I mean, you know, I try to just do my best to uh, listen to the, the black people around me and the, and the educated black people I have in my life. So I do my best to uh, not act like I have all the answers for, for everything, especially in, in a culture that I'm not from. But, you know, that's why when we, when we decided to raise the money, um, for Black Lives Matter organization, we, you know, when we raised 500,000, we got on the phone with uh, some of the women who started Black Lives Matter. I got on the phone with Tamika Mallory. I was on the phone with Karen Civil and talking with my friends to make sure the money went to, like, the correct places, you know, and people who really need it. It's just about listening. That's all. Let's, it's about listening. Let's talk about that for a moment because the way I think of activism, for me, it, it looks very differently. It's not necessarily just protesting in the I think that's great. But what about um, being an activist in the way in which you have decided to be one? What inspired you? What did it look like? You said you raised money for Black Lives Matter. What did you do? Mm -hmm. Walk us through everything that you did and how you find yourself in this moment. So for me, I, you know, it was three years ago I had like a string of festivals. And I decided that I was going to wear T-shirts with a message on them because I figured what better... <laughs> what better time to use a platform than in front of, you know, a bunch of people. Um, so one of the t-shirts I wore was, uh, if you want to change the system, you know, speak up, white silence is pro-racism, the whole thing. Um, and it didn't really, like, it's it kind of got swept under the rug back then. Um, but, you know, when all this stuff started happening again, and it's been happening, the police brutality against innocent black people, I was like, man, I'm not the biggest artist in the world. And I certainly don't have the most white fans in the world, but I got a good amount of people that I can definitely mobilize and turn into some money 
and I know they're down for the cause because it's merch, it's a good thing. And I've always been outspoken anyway, you know? And so it, it, how am I going to be in black culture and not be outspoken about racism? And then I, I got to ask you this, because you grew up in Atlanta, so that, that gives you a heads up, depending for so many people, because you're in the crux of that, of that beautiful black city where there are so many wonderful black leaders, home of so much great music and things that speak to our culture right now. Um, and we are really, really getting our word out, especially with this platform today, and saying mm -hmm. that we must use our voice to vote. Talk to me about what the importance of voting for you in this election. Yeah, so I, you know, full transparency, I had never voted before, ever. Um, and because, you know, I was one of those people who was like, my vote doesn't matter. and. You know, and and I and I don't know. Maybe it's because I was younger. Maybe it's because I really thought that, or I don't know. But I just think that it's it's got to, you know. Now this is a bit of a this is a bit of a privilege to say it's got to a breaking point for me because obviously it's been past the breaking point for black people. But I think that as a whole, young you know the young people need to get out and vote because we're the ones that never show up. <laughs> you know what I mean? We never show up to vote, but you know we're the future so it's like look we got to go out there and vote and then whatever happens happens but at least we do that part you know you got to do your part you're very candid in saying that you have a beautiful irony in the fact that you have your Ruben, mira esto okay, ya lo vi, lo vi. and there's something beautiful about that but i want to know why now for you why in this moment is it important for you to vote and what hits your spirit to say yes this is the time to do it honestly because the I think that George Floyd really uh, woke up a lot of people who, including myself, who I was, I was vocal and outspoken about racism. I put it in my lyrics. I put it on t-shirts. I would talk about it in interviews. Like, you know, I was vocal about it. But that video, in that moment, I think me along with a lot of other people just kind of was like, all right. Like, words are simply not enough anymore. We gotta do something, whether it's raising money, whether it's voting, or all the above. Like, it's, we gotta do something, you know? And, and, and I'm, um, I'm ashamed that it took that for me to be like, I need to raise money and I need to vote, you know? It's a shame. And I don't know, it just, I guess it snapped a bunch of people out of it, you know? And even if you were local and, and whatnot, it's just, it's time to actually put your money where your mouth is. It's time to go vote. You know, it's time to just stop talking about it and be about it, you know? And it's been time for that, but like I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed that it took me this long to actually really, really be about it, but I'm, I'm here now. So Russ, we all know that this is going to be your first time voting. Tell me what that yeah. experience is going to be like for you in terms of what you're excited about. I think you know what it's gonna do for me. It's gonna let me know that I'm I'm contributing to something bigger than myself, and I'm actually putting my money where my mouth is, and I'm being about it. Because you know, for so long, and I know I'm not alone with this, but you know, standing on the outside and just screaming about this and that and this should change, and this, it's like, all right, but did you vote? <laughs> you know, and so I'm, you know, I know it's it's gonna feel good to know that I I played a small vote, you know, and that's the problem, I think that, I think the mentality of, like, my vote doesn't matter needs to be changed to, my vote, albeit small, does matter, it's a role I'm playing, and if I play my part, and you play your part, and he and she plays their part, then we make a difference, but, uh, you know, it'll feel, I, I, I have a feeling it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna feel very, very bigger than me, I mean, I think when you, when you realize that giving, uh, actually feels better than receiving that's when you start wanting to do your part and contribute so voting is a is an easy way to give you know yeah to whom much is given much is required and you've been given a huge platform and we are so grateful for you Russ. philanthropist artist community activist first time voter we appreciate you yes us, okay? thank you i appreciate y'all yeah man i was i was Este me gusta hoy porque como es. A no me gusta por esto, pero me ha gustado el discurso que ha dicho. Sí, sí. Eso me ha parecido perfecto.
uh, again, we're continuing our conversation, letting you know that your voice is your vote and your vote is your voice. We can change where we are in this country. Currently, I'd like to welcome in Chicago Cubs right voter, Jason Hayward. I appreciate you. I brought in Atlanta and Chicago because I know you grew up in the metropolitan area of Atlanta, more specifically McDonough, let's be technical. Um, and, and you have been very vocal throughout this entire time in terms of what our country's been experiencing. Let's, let's look at the past month and a half, if you will. ¿Qué es eso que pasaron 50 segundos? No lo sé. Pero mi play está soltando aire más caliente que no sé qué. Sí, lo voy a dormir. No sé si las cosas. ¿Qué pasará? No sé. ¿Qué? ¿Qué? No, yo me quedo aquí. Sí, sí, yo también. ¿Qué ha pasado? ¿Qué? ¿Qué? No, yo lo estoy viendo. Tengo que volver a salir y volver a entrar. Se me... ¿Qué? Que yo lo veo en negro. Yo lo veo perfectamente. Dime lo que está pasando en mi entrada. Bueno, están hablando de que el presidente de la Liga de Béisbol de Estados Unidos a, se puso un cartel sobre el Black Lives Matter y esto. Vale, Pero ven los subtítulos. Justo se me ha desconectado el modo. Yo, no vayáis. 
each other and trying to take care of the family and trying to provide for them. You try to get off work, and then when you're like, wait a minute, you start looking at the clock, it's like, oh, this is not going to happen again, right? And, and so I saw, um, you know, Mayor Keisha Bottom oh, yeah. you know, reach out via social media to people and say, hey, you know, I'm going to address these issues right now. I need y'all to step in line and cast your votes. Keep hanging in there. So to me in Georgia, that's, that's what that looks like. Well, it's interesting that you even bring that up because there have been all these images specifically from Georgia because that's such a battleground um, where you see people, especially when it came to the primaries, doing whatever it takes. Um, and this is real life voter suppression that you're talking about. It's been happening for decades. It's not fake. What you're saying, these examples of sending you your ballot too late after the fact or shutting down the polls at 6 o'clock while people still are in line, that's a real life issue. There needs to be some type of change. And I think that what we're doing right now is fair. But the, the idea of voter suppression, do you think that that is well known, especially with folks you know, within the generation, your generation? I think it's known in our communities, right? I don't think it's spoke on enough. I don't think there's been enough light drawn to it. Bring it to light. Let people hear about it. Let people learn about what that looks like and, and get more people to say, okay, look, like, this is going to happen. We have to expect this and we can no longer make the excuse. You know, we can't say they didn't want us. Jason, everybody knows or it feels as if everyone knows that the time is now. America's paying attention to us. We have their eyes. We have their ears. If you look toward the future, what are you most excited about in terms of seeing the change? I'm excited about how fast the world is traveling. You know, the word is being spread right now. Uh, the <laughs> <thing is that laughs> the biggest entertainers are doing their part, but I'm also yeah. seeing people out there on the streets doing their part. You know, when so many things got lost, could have been very easily got in the, you know, in the commotion when it came to protests and we saw rioting, we saw looting. People still stood their ground. People still went out there and said, look, we're doing this for the right reason. We're going to come together, we're going to use drones, we're going to use social media. I feel like this is a new way of getting things mm -hmm. done the right way and just spreading the message. You're right about that, and you're right. People are spreading the word unapologetically. We out here. We doubling down. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Right. Duran 15 minutos cada uno. Más o menos he estado Hey, everybody. I am so excited to welcome este hombre me suena mucho. Hoy también, ¿no? ¿eh? Allen Rose. Será de la N de Acre. Sí. Pues hasta el personaje que tienes tú. ¿Te imaginas? Sí. Otro. We yes. have to get past the stigma of the mental systemic racism that comes with the presidential race, governors, mayors, senators, judges. We've been conditioned to... Vale, me da a mí que este es un suscriptor, ¿verdad? So usually when we sí. looked up at all of Otro. those races, Otro. people that were running, not only did they not they were there to represent... So therefore, que, ahora estoy viniendo, pero... Obama. 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 Otro. And so many people try to make this political. This is not political. Me telling somebody to vote is like telling somebody to pay tax. So that's one, getting over the stigma of nobody is going to represent our best interest. And then number two, the reality is that the person that gets the most votes doesn't necessarily win the presidency. That's uncomfortable right there because that's actually what took place in 2016. The Electoral College shows the president. And if you put all of their pictures up, I'm pretty sure they more like each other. How about that? And then the third thing, 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 the third thing,
lines is five hours long. You get up to the to the pole and they don't work. Elderly people working in the city, but they got the young people who understand technology working in the suburbs. Like these are all systematic things that try to discourage us from voting. And then finally, we don't have a day off to vote. We need to work. So we don't get a day off. It's gonna be a full day. And I gotta work to pay my bills. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna mail in vote. And you know what you have to do to realize that that counts too. So your vote will be counted if you're able to mail it in. So those are a few things that I hope that we can do and mobilize and shout to LeBron and his team. Shout to you and everybody involved. We will make it. Order. Well, let's talk about more than a vote. Um, uh, there is a black collective of athletes, of artists uh, coming together and saying voter suppression is a real deal, especially in the black community. When you just talked about, I got to work, so I can't go vote. And then when we do get in the booth, just in case we don't have to work, do we know who we're voting for? Not only do we have to vote, we got to be educated. And it's not always even about the man who's in office or the woman who's in office for president. It's about your local elections. It's about the people who, who are your DAs, your state DAs, like the people who actually make change in your community, who will change police brutality, who will make sure that your community is taken care of, who will defund police and hope that they can help you in stopping police brutality. So talk to me about why you decided to be a part of More Than a Voter, what it actually means. Well, it means a lot to be involved with such an impressive collective as you mentioned. Oh, they almost quatro. I no, you're all cinco. And I know cinco. 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 Cinco in a lot of ways what's uh, encouraging but also sometimes disappointing about our world as black people in America because we put a broad here as labor and to entertainment and we use those vehicles to get paid and move to the mm -hmm. suburbs and the idols of white kids and so now that we have this collective I would say sports and entertainment represent the most powerful group of black men in the United States. I'm talking about money, power, celebrity, um, the ability to mobilize, community involvement, their leadership, their intellect. And so to have all of us pull it in the same direction at the same time, I don't want anything that we're not going to do about it. But it's definitely going to be a difference-making in a 2020 vote because we're going to make sure we inform everybody that they can let their voice be heard. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you a lot of people. What does voter suppression look like? Esa era la típica de... Creo que no es lo que parece. ¿Por qué pone abajo quién está aquí? Eh, supresión de voto y en Kentucky. Lo de las puertas esto. Ah, vale. So do not be discouraged. Pensaba que decía que está aquí el chico, no. Cuenta que es una ciudad de ahí, de Estados Unidos. Ah, mira, ha dicho un de... ...de tu madre. Right, and that is a form of being activated, being an activist. It doesn't have to be protesting. It doesn't have to look like what you think traditionally activism looks like. It's voting. It's that simple. We now have to understand, like, this, this is a critical mass moment for this movement to continue to hold up as much steam for as long as possible. And that's what this collection is going to hopefully allow for that situation to happen. Jalen, in today's age of technology, it should be easier to vote. 
No doubt. It's like we call these devices smartphones, but yet I can't vote for them. All of the things that we do in our lives are in our phones. All of these barriers are things that people will need to overcome in order to create a level of enthusiasm to vote. And again, this is not political. It's your right to do so. And there's so many times where you feel like somebody may have gotten done unjustly in your community. Pay attention to who the judges are. Es que no veo nada. Mayor, Ahora mismo me está saltando una. Bueno, ya. Ya no, ya se A ti también te está saltando. Holding Black Lives Matter signs. That means there's a breakthrough. Now, what happens with that breakthrough is the next step. You're going to look down in your email, Carrie. You're going to see all of these companies telling you how they're going to work on their diversity, how they're looking themselves in the mirror. They need to make change. <laughs> Just like in sports, right? <laughs> look on the field, you know, on the court, all those black players. Further you get up, it's like altitude or a ladder. It gets thinner and thinner. And so a lot of people talk about the system being broken. I hate to remind people that it's not broken. It was built this way. And one of our ways to help change the system is to vote. So that's why more than a vote is so very important. So we can make sure everybody participates Oh, hay otro. I think it's interesting because you talked about black men being very powerful in the U.S. if they're athletes and entertainers because for so long those have been the only avenues traditionally to be treated. The NBA season comes back. What are your feelings on the season coming back um, in the midst of everything that is happening? I think you'll see players are challenging the establishment more. You're going to see them say, okay, If you have all of these marketing and promotional deals, how many of them are with minorities? How many mm -hmm. people are you employing in the NBA? What about certain teams? Who do you have as a minority owner? Or what about the candidates that you have for positions of power? NBA players have proven as black that they are now movers and shakers in the game. They're now the dog, not the tail. Sí, creo que será NBA, eh. Sí, sí. Lo he dicho antes, creo. Social changes and conversations have taken place in sports that weren't during the game. Colin Kaepernick was before the game. The Ali Summit was a press conference. So they could mobilize if they chose to. But when and if you do play, challenge the league. Black Lives Matter on the jersey. Continue to make sure that every time people are watching the game, they're also seeing the movement happen. Jalen, I appreciate you because you are always entertaining and important as everyone I, I really, truly am looking forward to the NBA season. Thank you for working with more than a vote because your voice, your platform, all of it is needed, my friend. Be safe, okay? Yes, ma'am. I love and appreciate you. Don't fall away all day. Thank you. Sí, Love you too. Every conversation that we had today, I hope was helpful for you. I, I just am sí. so grateful to everyone who came on with me to talk about what's going on in our culture. Que haya otro. Huge shout out to Jalen Rose, Bud B, Jason Hayward, Yvonne Ogie, and Russ. Their words were inspiring, but also... Yo creo que haya otro evento de esto. Sí, 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 poco habrá otro. All the information that we've been able to place in front of you. Again, you need to check out these resources because they are so Todos, ir a visitar esa página. A esa página. We, the people, want a lo mejor hay so, diferentes capítulos de esto. Pues, sí. Again, thank you so much for joining us and paying attention because this message, again, is invaluable. I'm Carrie Champion for We, the People. Qué guay, tío. Vídeo de casi una hora, pero no me importa. Lo voy a subir sí o sí. ¿Qué? 
Ala. Ala. Y ahora la tienda, ¿no? ¡Eh! Ah, ahora. Ahora se puede bailar, ¿verdad? Ahora se puede bailar. Bueno, chicos, espero que os haya gustado el vídeo. Dale like y que os vea más. Esto tiene copyright, pero bueno.